I was thinking on the way in today about the derivatives industry, and it's certainly had its fair share of stick over the past couple of years. On top of that, it's now going through a whole bunch of regulatory change too, and so we'll have to run a very similar gauntlet to that which the equities world has been in. But before we talk about those changes in more detail, let's just explode the top three urban myths about the derivatives market. Firstly, some people see derivatives as little more than the financial equivalent of sticking 50 quid on the 330 at Catterick. But it's really not about gambling, it's about risk transfer. And that enables a whole range of different firms, from farmers producing commodities, through to manufacturers and financial firms, to manage and hedge their future economic risk. And that affects all of us in our everyday lives, particularly people like me, who still have to worry about pensions and mortgages. Secondly, derivatives aren't an asset class in their own right, but instead stretch across a whole range of different physical and financial products and enable people to take a position on their future price movements. That's why they sometimes appear confusing at first glance. But the third and most important urban myth is yes, of course, there have been some spectacular failures in this industry. MF Global, Penson, Peregrine, to name but a few. But in nearly every case, this has been down to either chronic mismanagement or downright dishonesty. Of course, regulators need to be very concerned about this, but this shouldn't detract from the basic economic value that derivatives can bring to the world economy. So what are these changes then? Well, in the wake of the 2008 financial crisis, new rules such as Dodd-Frank in the US and Amir here in Europe basically set the OTC marketplace on a collision course with its exchange-traded counterparts. Well, will it work? I guess that's the big question. Well, for me, I think that the idea of having legal entity identifiers and one set of instrument codes seems like a good thing, especially if the music ever does stop again and we have to put the pieces back. More controversial, though, is the idea of trying to get all this OTC trading to take place on electronic platforms, CEFs or OTFs. And it seems here that the regulators haven't really learned the lessons from the equities experiment, especially in terms of shrinking average trade size, the potential for predatory HFT, and of course the extra cost and confusion that market participants have to endure to access this new liquidity. The other concern in all of this, of course, is clearing, because the new rules mean that firms will have to lodge their margin up front. And that means that some firms will decide not to use derivatives markets at all and just take on the risk. And that's a bit like saying, I'll take the risk of my house burning down because I can't afford the insurance premium. So what does it all mean? Well, in my view, I think it's all about trying to position your business and adapt it for the new rules. And given that these are gonna come in place by the end of the year, I better get into the office.